Let's move on to our, our Sugar Bowl thoughts the morning after. Let's start with Texas. As we did with Alabama, I think the friction point lies with Texas. I don't think anything different about Texas that I did going into this game. I, I really don't. And that's not to say that they should have won yesterday, because obviously they did not play well enough to win. But that's kind of the thing. Like, they had the tools to win, in my mind. And this is not me trying to defend my pick of Texas. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're Texas, you got to feel real good about where you stand going forward. Quinn Ewers, as of right now, likely coming back. You had two NFL wide receivers last night. That'll be a proof of concept that I think continues to attract more talent to your team, whether it's on the recruiting trail or via the portal. But at the end of the day, man, whether you have the tools to win or not, the style of game that you played, the lack of execution is what kept you from winning this game. Because we knew what it was if you're Texas, right? We, we knew what it's about here. Like Roman Dunze, he's a special cat. Michael Penix Jr., there's one of him. And he is, in fact, him. He proved it again last night. They're going to get theirs. You can't give Aaron Judge extra pitches when he's at the plate. And they did exactly that. Two turnovers. They had 10 penalties for 66 yards. You can't help Washington if you're Texas. So that's frustrating. That hurts today. You knew the style of game it would be. But even with that being said, as long as you kind of just let it hurt for a little bit, because I, don't, I, don't, I know you don't want to turn the page too quickly if you're a Texas fan, and I'm not here telling you to do that. But once you do sort of gather yourself, brush the dust off, and look to the future, the future is extremely, bright, ex- extremely, extremely bright for Texas. They're set up for success in the SEC and this 12-team playoff model. And why do I think that? I think it's two things, culture and roster. Starting with roster, your quarterback, like I just said, likely coming back in Quinn Ewers. Behind him, you got Arch Manning, and there should be all the juice in the world around Arch Manning. And people are saying like, hey, Arch Manning, he's just a name. If he, if he, his last name was Jonathan, he would not be a five-star cat. Say what you want about his last name. Nick Saban and Kirby Smart both wanted him on their football team. Those are two dudes that would not waste their time recruiting a quarterback that they didn't think was any good. And newsflash, they recruit pretty good talent. So I think Arch Manning is deserving of all the hype that he's getting. Uh, other part of this, as of right now, Texas has a top three class in the 2024 recruiting rankings. If they finish with a top three class, that would be back-to-back now top three classes. So from sitting right here with the recruiting success they have, with the proof of concept to be a portal destination if you're Texas, you would imagine the NIL, Dex, the, the NIL Ducks in a row for Texas. They should be good on the roster side of things here for a minute. They should be in good shape. That's the first part. The more important part here is I think the culture at Texas has arrived. And we've thought that for a minute, but if there was going to be a spot for Texas last night to pack it in, down 13, Washington is just ripping and roaring offensively, they could have packed it in at 13 down. Hey, good season. We won the Big 12. Pat on the back, T-shirts and hats for everybody. Good season, boys. Came up just short. They battled, man. They battled to make it a one-score game. Had a few shots from like the 12-yard line to try and win the game. Cards fell how they did. I, I don't think there's anything to hang your head about if you're Texas. The culture itself to scratch and claw and fight, that is once again an example of new Texas that Steve Sarkeesian has installed. If they hadn't arrived, we would have seen it last night. So Texas, I don't feel any different about them than I did going into that game. Unfortunate that they execute the way they did if you're a Texas fan, but it is what it is. Survive in advance, move on to the SEC next year. Let's talk about Washington here, man. They remind me of Steph Curry. And what I mean by that is when Steph Curry has that three ball working, when that basket is looking wide to him and he can pull up from anywhere within half court, it doesn't matter if you're the bigger team. It doesn't matter if you're the better scorer in the paint. Doesn't matter if you've got this great, you know, perimeter defense. Doesn't matter because when he lets that thing go from beyond the arc and he's feeling it, like that's just kind of the way it's going to go that day. Better buckle up, better pack a lunchbox, better bring your hard hat because you're going for a long day. That is Washington when they have the deep ball working. The style of game that we thought it could be going into last night with the advantages for Texas, they were still advantages. Texas still ran for right around 200 yards, a little bit less than that. Texas had the definitive advantage on the line of scrimmage. They ran for six yards of carry. If you had told me on New Year's Eve, Texas running for six yards of carry, I'd say, okay, hey, pack, pack your suitcase, boys, in Austin. Like, y'all going to Houston. 
That wasn't the case. It wasn't the case because Michael Penix Jr. had three ball working. Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk both went over 120 yards. Michael Penix went for over four bills. Like, it's just, it's the eraser. It's the eraser kind of plays that Washington has that is the reason why they are scary for everybody else. Like, the path for them, in, in theory, I suppose, is narrow. But it's been narrow multiple times now against Oregon, against Texas last night. And guess what? As long as you walk on that path, doesn't matter how wide it is. You get from A to B, you're good. And they got from A to B last night, and the pass game downfield is just, I mean, it, it, should be, it should be concerning for Michigan as they head into that national title game, which we'll give you our pick here just a little bit later in the show. Now, I was really encouraged and impressed by Washington's ability to downshift. Now, we are live right now as of, I guess, what, Tuesday morning? Days are getting all, conf- are getting all mixed up. Um, what, what I'm trying to say here is we don't know what Dylan Johnson's status will be going forward. You hope he's ready to roll. But the time of possession last night from Washington, 36 minutes and some change to just about 23 minutes and some change from Texas, they controlled the game. We said it during our, uh, our preview for this one. The team that was able to slow the game down the best, we thought had a good chance to win. It ended up being Washington. The team that's able to get that key turnover has the best chance to win. Ended up being Washington on both sides of things. So their ability to kind of shape shift, I think makes them, again, another, another factor that just should be, uh, should be concerning for Michigan when they play them in that national title game. The stage is not going to overwhelm Washington when they get to Houston. Because yes, they're this team from the Pac-12, and yes, we're not as accustomed to seeing that golden helmet and that purple logo in a spot like that. But guess what? It doesn't matter, and it definitely doesn't matter to Washington. Like, it doesn't matter in the context of anything that's going to happen in the future because logos don't win championships. Players do. And the players at Washington have the most steady heart rate, the most steady hand, I think, in the entire country. You want to know why? They are 8-0 in one-score games. I made this comp in our preview, or our final thoughts video, rather. I'll make it again right now. Alex Honnold, for those of y'all that know the free solo documentary, dude climbs mountains with no ropes, no cables, no safety net just goes out there and scales these thousands of foot kind of mountain faces. His brain, they did a study on it, does not process pressure correctly. Like the part of his brain that's supposed to produce fear doesn't actually work the way a normal human being's brain works. Y'all, that's Washington. They get in these one score games. I think they're comfortable. Just like Alex Honnold, he's up on those mountaintops, however many thousand feet up in the air, his heart rate's steady. That's Washington. They're going to get to Houston and forget the experience they do or don't have you know, in, in games like that. Forget the experience they don't have in a national title setting. They don't care. They don't care. And they've been in these kind of games all year long. And I said this last night. I'll say it again. I wonder if the logo of Washington is keeping us and keeping Vegas from adequately assessing them. And what I mean by that is if you put a blue blood logo on Washington's helmet, are they underdogs to Texas? Take it a step further. If you put a blue blood logo on Washington's helmet, are they underdogs to Michigan in this game? It opened at a four and a half point favorite for the Wolverines. I don't know because we've seen them win multiple kinds of games. They've got an NFL wide receiver room. They've got an NFL quarterback. We've seen them downshift now and be able to control the tempo of a game. They won the line of scrimmage last night in terms of 36 to 23 in terms of time of possession. They didn't run for more yards, but you hear what I'm saying. They got what they needed to get on the ground. I just think we, uh, we need to give a little bit of thought to that when it comes to assessing Washington, when it comes to assessing them in this national title spot because they just keep on proving they do not care about anyone's opinion. They don't care about the line. They don't care about being counted out. They just go out there, play their game, play the narrow path that they tend to play when it comes to throwing the ball deep. They handle business. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.